Hell was created for Satan and his angels. It was not created to be a kingdom for Satan to rule in, but as a means to punish him for his sin. It was created as a response to Satan's rebellion. God's judgment is righteous because it is made after the crime and not before. In Isaiah 14, we read in our English translation of the Bible the name Lucifer when referencing Satan before his rebellion against God. The name Lucifer is not the name he had. That's a partial translation of his Latin name. His full name was first penned in Hebrew and is as follows. Khalil bin Shekhar. His first name is what he does. It's his job title. One who exalts God. Khalil is short for the word hallelujah, which means to praise and exalt God. El being God and short for Elohim. Bin Shekhar collectively means that he is the dawn of the morning or the firstborn created being. He was the firstborn of all living creatures. We can better understand hell when we look at Satan. So let's do that. Ezekiel 28, verse 1, it says, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre. Oftentimes, God refers to earthly rulers as princes, kings, or commanders. We see this in 1 Samuel 1.10. In this chapter, prince is referring to the earthly king, and king is a reference to Satan. So in verse 12, we see, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealeth up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. His beauty was not in facial features, but in his covering. Imagine the glory of God reflecting off of his covering, a brilliant display of light. Verse 13, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Perhaps covering him like Joseph, Joseph's coat of many colors, I'm willing to bet most haven't noticed a similarity with the earthly priest. Most people I don't think have really done an in-depth look at Satan and who he was created to be. We hear he was a worship leader and that's about it. The breastplate of the high priest on earth was filled with gemstones. Satan was not just a worship leader of heaven, he was the high priest. Upon his sin and expulsion, there was a gap in heaven. No one fulfilled the duties of the high priest. No one fulfilled the duties of the worship leader. So God set up a copy of the heavenly temple on the earth through Moses and allowed for a man to temporarily fulfill the role of priest. That was until Jesus, the great high priest, ascended into heaven and shall forever be high priest interceding for us. Unlike the earthly priest, Satan was missing three gemstones in his breastplate. He had nine, whereas the earthly priest had twelve. What gemstones were missing? We have a gate, amethyst, and jacinth. When looking at the blessing of Jacob to his sons, he likened them to these twelve stones. They were the birthstones of a nation. Each son was paralleled to a stone. So why were there three missing from Satan's breastplate? Perry Stone has a proposal. Three reasons that he didn't have them all. Number one, he never fulfilled the following three things. He will never bring forth a royal seed, which we see promised in Genesis 49.20. He will never carry your burden, Genesis 49.14. And he will not overcome in the end, Genesis 49.14. The second reason is that he is not yesterday, today, and forever. Thirdly, he was receiving these stones as the layers of the foundation of heaven were being laid. This may give a hint as to when he sinned during the construction of heaven. 
We do know that he was in heaven while it was being created. Job tells us this. Then if we keep reading in Ezekiel, it says the settings, pipes, and timbrels. This is the music of the voice. We'll look a little bit more at this in Isaiah. Moving to verse 14 of Ezekiel 28. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mount of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. He was the anointed cherub. In Hebrew, it's cha. It's exclusive. He is the man, the anointed cherub. Not an archangel. He was placed or ordained in the midst of the stones of fire you walked. Now, in Hebrew, the word used does not mean stones, but gemstones. Gemstones are formed in extreme heat. Jewish teaching says that Satan helped God build heaven and would have therefore been walking among the layers of gemstones that were the foundation of heaven. Verse 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day you were created, till iniquity was found in thee. We can see that Satan had no problem at all with anything that God created. He loved everything. So much that he wanted it all to be his. The only thing Satan didn't like was God. He didn't like the fact that he had to submit to a higher power. So God cast him out, stripped him of all he had, and then created an alternate dwelling place, hell. That is the purpose of hell. It's for those who rebel, those who reject God. We'll look a little bit more in depth at this next week on the actual exchanged conversation between God and Satan and what that looks like, what happened as a result. Hello everyone, my name is Philip and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you've learned something. I have a few more videos to make concerning hell. I think hell is one of the more misunderstood realities and I want to take some time and Look at it from a biblical perspective. With that being said, for those of you who do not yet already know, I have written a book concerning spiritual gifts. I wrote this book mainly to bring clarity to those who have a misconception of what the gifts of the Spirit really are. Many get a little weirded out because of how they've seen certain ministers on TV operate in them. I actually address this issue in the very first chapter the introduction. In this book, I have over 200 passages of scripture quoted and dozens more referenced. The goal is to give a biblical, detailed understanding of the gifts of the Spirit, all nine of them, and how to properly operate in them. And for those of you who do not think that they are for today and that maybe they have expired, I also talk about that before we break down the teaching on these gifts. This book is available on Amazon both the Kindle and soft cover. I do have physical copies for those of you who are in the area. As always, I appreciate your support. God bless.